I was having y'all a pretty quiet day for day two of free agency so far, but I do want to talk about would Brandon Sheriff's future long-term contract, if we're able to get one done, will more than likely look like because of Joe Thune signing his long-term extension. And the same thing with Jonathan Allen. What will his long-term contract look like now that Leonard Williams has signed his? And we're not going to like the answer at all. Let's get it. First of all, before we dive into that, just to let y'all know, NFL teams must be under the salary cap by 4 p.m. Eastern tomorrow, which is when the league year officially begins. That's how it is every year. Because as of like right now, you could be in the negative and still sign guys and do whatever you want until Wednesday by 4 p.m. After that, if you want to sign somebody, you need to have the cap space available to actually do that. So if you have zero dollars worth of cap space, you want to sign somebody for five million dollars, you need to release five million dollars worth of players to get them. Since yesterday, since the legal tampering period started, you didn't have to do that. But as of tomorrow by 4 p.m., that's what it's going to be like. And I'm expecting teams like us to still have a good amount of salary cap, around $30 million, near the top of the league, to finally have our chance to eat. Because a lot of teams are just going to be out of it. They're, they're crunching numbers right now just to get under the salary cap. So after 4 p.m. tomorrow, they may just be stuck with what they have. And remember, you have to have some type of salary cap left available for your draft class when you draft players they don't play for free so keep that in mind tomorrow may be our time to shine and i mean plus with us needing receivers so bad with the receiver market being all the way messed up the draft is deep in receiver there's a lot of good receivers still available in free agency so that's why a lot of these really talented guys like kenny galladay and curtis samuel are still holding out because it's hard for them to get big time money when first of all it's not like a lot of teams that really really need receiver right now and again there's still a lot of guys available in free agency other than just kenny galladay and curtis samuel and the draft is very deep. And even as much as I love Kenny Galladay, I see the side of the argument where it's like, why would you pay Kenny Galladay potentially 20 mil a year when you can just draft somebody in the second round? They may potentially be as good for like 3 million a year. And this isn't like quarterback. A lot of the great receivers in the NFL right now were drafted second, third round, even later rounds than that. Kenny Galladay was drafted in the third. Terry McLaurin third. I mean, you can even go all the way up to late first that a lot of the really good receivers in today's NFL were taken. That's been a trend like the last five years at least. So right now the market is drying up for these receivers. And Kenny Galladay and Curtis Samuel will more than likely end up signing to a team, preferably us, at least for one of them, for way less than what they expected because them and their agents probably didn't predict this free agency market that looked like this for the receivers. It's booming for a lot of other positions, especially edge rusher and offensive linemen. But wide receiver, it's, it's ugly for receivers, which is a good thing for teams that's trying to sign receivers. I thought it was going to go downhill once the Patriots overpaid for Aguilar, but them getting him off the market actually kind of helped in the long run. But let's get to the main point of this video. First up, Brandon Sheriff. Well, the first thing with Joe Thune is to note that he's making $16 million a year and he wasn't even voted to first team all pro like Brandon Sheriff was. I feel like he deserved it more than Brandon Sheriff being completely objective, but hey, for some reason, wanted to get Brandon Sheriff all pro, so now he's gonna hold it over everybody's heads, especially the Burgundy and Gold Rivera and company, that he was technically the best guard, at least award-wise, in the NFL last season, even after missing some games. So of course he's gonna be like, well, if Joe Thune's making 16 million, that's at the very base of what I need to make. But based off of the Leonard Williams contract, which we're going to get into for Jonathan Allen, but it also has some heavy implications for what Brandon Sheriff's contract may look like because his franchise tag was $19.35 million as far as what the Giants owed him and the hit to the salary cap. But he ended up signing a long-term deal worth $21 million a year. So that's higher than his tag. And I'm assuming Brandon Sheriff will probably end up wanting to do the same and demanding the same since he's on a franchise tag for 18 million that means he's probably only gonna accept 18 million or more per year and at the very the very very lowest is 16 million per year which i highly doubt he will go that low i'm pretty sure he's gonna stay 18 million a year or above and we have until july 15th to extend them or he would just end up playing this entire season on the tag and he's gone 
So, I mean, it's really to the point, if you can't extend him before July 15th, you're better off trading him and getting whatever you can for him because he's going to just end up walking during the 2022 offseason because we're not going to franchise tag him for a third consecutive year. I highly doubt that. So, it's basically either sign him for $18 million a year or more, maybe potentially gets up to $20 million per year, which is ridiculous money for a guard i'm not with that i was team re-signed brandon sheriff to a long-term deal but 20 million a year is ridiculous but that's what it's looked like it's going to be and at the very least it's going to be 18 million a year which is also still like man i don't i don't like that at all again for a guard especially one that doesn't give you 16 games a year if you can't extend them by july 15th you better figure out how you're going to trade them and get some good value back don't Trent Williams' situation and end up getting a third and I believe a fifth back for an all-pro player. Now we got to talk about Jonathan Allen because when we have to re-sign him, which would be the 2022 offseason, it may get ugly. Again, like I talked about just a little while ago, Leonard Williams just signed a three-year deal worth $63 million, $45 million fully guaranteed. And Jonathan Allen is better than him. We just got to really, really hope he takes a hometown discount or something. He is from Virginia, so y'all Virginia people, y'all DMV people, talk to him. Offer him food, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Make him want to stay in the DMV. Do whatever y'all got to do, man, because it's looking like the base for what he may ask for is $21 million a year. Unless he goes out there and has a bad season, which, of course, we don't want him to have because we want to win. If he goes out there and has a season similar to what he did last season, and I'm expecting him to probably be even better, he's going to be asking for minimum what Leonard Williams just got. Minimum. He's younger and everything. And it's getting ugly for the defensive line. We have Matt Ioannidis up until 2023, making $7.25 million a year. We have Deron Payne, same time. Contract ends 2023, making $3.6 million a year. You have Montez Sweat all the way up till 2024, making $2.9 million a year on average. Luckily for us, Chase Young is signed all the way to 2025 for an average of $8.6 million a year. But we're more than likely gonna have to extend these guys before their contracts end because that's when you get in ugly territory like what we're dealing with with Brandon Sheriff so even though Chase Young's contract doesn't expire until 2025 we may want to extend him 2023 2024 and when we do boy resetting the market like crazy I think Deron Payne's probably gonna reset the market I don't think Matt Ioannidis will reset the market because, I mean, he just recently signed his three-year deal back in 2020, and he clearly didn't reset the market, but he got a nice amount of money. But Chase Young's going to reset the market. De'Ron Payne's going to reset the market. Montez Sweat's going to reset the market. And I'm assuming next offseason, Jonathan Allen will probably reset the market. So this defensive line, we're not going to be able to keep everybody. We're going to have to go back to the draft and hopefully get some guys. I feel like Chase Young and Montez Sweat are the two biggest priorities but of course we all would love to really have Deron Payne, Jonathan Allen, and Matt Ioannidis. I mean even Tim Settle's contract ends in 2022. Luckily for us right now he's making less than 700000 a season but at 2022 how much money is he going to be asking for? Especially if he starts to get a more prominent role in his defense. Five to six years from now I highly doubt we're going to have all six of these guys. I highly, highly doubt it. Somebody's going to be gone. Maybe even two of them. Maybe even three of them. And that's where, like, when people wanted Dak Prescott, that makes it almost impossible to keep more than three of these guys especially for the money that Dak Prescott's getting. But at the end of the day, right now our focus is on the free agency market. We don't really have to worry about Brandon Sheriff till we start getting into the summer and especially July. We don't really, really have to worry about Jonathan Allen till next off season, but hopefully we can get an extension done before then. And then, like I said, the other guys, we don't have to worry about until beyond that. But it's definitely something to keep in mind when we're considering how we want to structure this team. If you want to go big money at quarterback or receiver, remember, you're adding a piece, you have to let another piece go. Now, granted, there's rumors going around that this huge TV deal will make the cap space skyrocket, which may save us. 
We'll see. I don't know because they're saying that's why Jerry Jones was cool with giving Dak top two quarterback money when he's definitely not a top two quarterback because by the time this TV deal gets done, it's a rumor going around that the cap space will skyrocket and Dak Prescott's contract won't even be too crazy by then. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please like it if you liked it. If you learned anything, please subscribe. If you haven't, hit the bell next to the subscription button for more informative videos like this one. I'm going to keep y'all updated on everything free agency. I'm, I'm working on some film sessions to get to y'all. I have my consistent live streams still on the way every week. I have more mock drafts, three more to be exact, before the draft actually hits. So stay tuned for all of that. And I really appreciate all of the support y'all, everybody that pulls up to every video, likes, leaves a comment, shares to everybody so they can join the Street Scores family so we can get more members. Shout out to everybody that pulls up to every video and every live stream. And of course, man, I appreciate everybody that gives to the channel, everybody that donates. Big shouts out to all of my sponsors, especially my Pro Bowl sponsors who name you see scrolling on the screen right now. Really appreciate all y'all. I'll catch y'all later. Hope some good news comes out of free agency soon. I'm out.